I had a purpose. I wanted to be one of the best basketball players to ever play. And anything else that was outside of that lane, I didn't have time for. If your practices are more competitive than the games themselves, you're doing the wrong thing. I took tap dancing lessons. <laughs> okay. No kidding. I took tap. And tap was like the best training for me in the world. Do you remember what you did during that game that made me realize I was <laughs> with you all these years? No. You don't remember? Top 10, top 10 I got a top 10. Got my motivation high for my top 10. Got to learn from the wise women and men. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one, work on your weaknesses. At 13 years old, you know, I played the longer game because my game wasn't about being better than you at 13. It was to be better than you when you know, the chips are really on, on the line. So when we played at 13, I would size you up and see what your strengths and weaknesses are. How do you approach the game? Are you silly about it? Are you goofy about it? Are you good at it just because you're bigger and stronger than everybody else? Right? Or is there actually thought and skill that you put into it? Right? And when I'd play, I'd play to my weaknesses. I wouldn't play to my strengths, I'd play to my weaknesses. Because when you're playing summer basketball, there's so many games. So there's not a lot of skill work being done. So when are you gonna get better? Right? When you're playing in competition situations, you're only playing to your strengths, why? Because you wanna win. Right? So what I would do, I was work on the things during those games that I was weak at. Left hand, pull up jump shot, uh, post game. Right? So I have a strategy. And so then fast forward to when I'm 17 and my game is completely well-rounded and that player at 13 that I saw at 13 is still doing the same shit at 17. Mm. Now you got a problem. That's right. Also, if you want to have more confidence, check out my 254 series. They're free. The links to join are in the description below. You start with where you want your game to be, what would make your game most unstoppable or hard to deal with. If you wake up in the morning and you're dreading going to work, dude, do something else. <laughs> right. Do something else. And those are hard decisions to make, but when you make those decisions, it's a very liberating experience. Or to go play someplace else, to try to chase a championship. That's not me, man. That's not, being, that's not what my career has been about. Rule number two, study success. Kind of take us behind uh, kind of the current with Michael. Was there ever a moment that you guys spoke that you felt like it energized you and you learned from him? Yeah, it was, well, it was crazy, man, because my favorite player was Magic growing up. Mm. And then I quickly realized my father st stole all my height and I wasn't gonna be a 6'9 <laughs> point guard. So I had to, you know, so I looked at this young guy coming up. And the thing that I marveled at wasn't the fact that he was getting to the rim and doing these fancy stuff. It was like, how is he getting to the rim? Mm. How is he doing it, right? And you look at the footwork, you look at the fundamentals, you look at the spacing, the mm. pacing, right? And all those little things, the angles. Mm. And that's what becomes fascinating. It's like, okay, how do I get there? Right, so I started studying all those basics. Mm -hmm. And then when I came to the league, the first time I played against him, um, I won his respect because it was like, this kid's not scared of me at all, mm -hmm. right? And he saw Kendrick's spirit from that standpoint, mm -hmm. and that started a relationship. And it became mm -hmm. something where it was like, you know, text him anytime, hits me right back, mm -hmm. questions, hits me right back, and mm -hmm. we're talking all the time. Rule number three, push through the pain. For me, it was, it was um, kind of, the perfect series, playing the Celtics, you know? then beating us in 08, and then you know, having five, I mean, we joke about that a lot, but the most important thing was beating the Celtics because of everything that they meant to this organization. And it was a tough series for me. I mean, most people don't know this, but I had a bone spur in my ankle. And then uh, a couple games in Boston, I had to leave the game, go back in the locker room and get it injected because I could barely walk. And I had a broken finger that I was playing with. I had a cast on my right finger. And then I was having to deal with you know, Garnett, Pierce, um, Ray Allen, uh, Rondo, Rashid Watt, I mean, all these guys, and having to try to figure out how to get through that series. And so um, it was a big relief to win. First and foremost, it was a relief to win and get out of that series a lot. If I lost two to the Celtics, man, I'd, I'd been miserable. Rule number four, have a strong purpose. Trivial things weren't gonna pull my attention. It had to be things, weren't gonna pull my attention. It had to be things that were, I had a purpose. I wanted to be one of the best basketball players to ever play. And anything else that was outside of that lane, I didn't have time for. 
At, at what age did that goal become crystal clear? That I, that's made, what I made that deal with myself at 13 years old. At 13 years 13 old? 13 years old. That's you the deal I made. You were crystal clear about it? Crystal clear. And where did inspiration come from? Um, the love of the game. The love of the game. The challenge. Like, I, I would watch Magic play. I'd watch Michael play. And I would see them do these unbelievable things. And I'd say, you know, can I get to that level? I don't know, but let's find out. Rule number five, be a great teammate. There was a year there in 03 where I had 40 points in nine straight games, right? Shaq was out. It was a toe thing. So Phil comes to me before the stress says, Kobe, we need you to take over the offense. I'm like, all right, cool. So that literally- See no more. I got it. <laughs> Fine. I got it. So that literally started the streak of 40 straight games, you know, 40 points in nine straight games. Shaq comes back from injury and Phil goes, you know, I still continue to do it, right? And then Phil calls me to his office, goes, hey, you know, we're starting to lose the big fella. What do you mean? Well, he's not getting the attention. You know, this, this 40 point streak is starting to kind of take away his fire mm. to prove something, right? So I need you to start dialing it back. I'm like, what? <laughs> he says, we're going to lose him and we need him in June. Okay. All right. You have a game against the Clippers. I think I had like 38 or something like that. And I had a chance to score 40 and to get 40 again. It was a blowout game. I dumped the ball in the shack instead of shooting a wide open shot. The 40 point streak ended that night. Wow. That was it. And that's inside stuff that people don't know. Right. <laughs> and so you just, tell me you went to Phil's office. Know. Are you happy yes. now? Yeah. Because Phil was like, hey, we got to dial it back. Got to dial it back. We're you starting to lose the big fella. Perfect Kobe, too. You're like, he's like, you got to dial it back. You're like, all right, I'll score 38 instead of 40. <laughs> well, I mean, this is the streak thing. I would, it yeah. would have been 10 in a row. I would right. have broke a record. Right, wow. right. Right, I would have broke the record. But instead, you know. Rule number six, nurture good relationships. We're going to reunite the two of you back together again on Valentine's Day. Uh, 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 hey, what's up, young boy? What's up, man? What's up? Hey, hey. So good to play with you again. It did. I had flashbacks. Felt great. It was, the game was real easy, and we read each other very easily. And um, it was uh, it was fun to kind of you know go back to memory lane. Do you believe him when he says it was all a media ploy by him to grab attention and take pressure off of you? Big chief marketer. Yeah, you should say that all the time. <laughs> you should say that all the time. Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, co MVPs of All Star 2009. I know you're not exactly the sentimental type, but when you guys are having the interaction on the court, feel like old times a little bit. Does it make you a little bit at all wistful for being able to play with Shaq, having those those moments? No. <laughs> Sha Shaq? No. <laughs> but do you remember what you did during that game that made me realize I was with you all these years? No. You don't remember? Mm -mm. So we got the co-MVP. It's me, mm -hmm. Sharif, and you standing on stage. And what did you tell me to do? told me to take the trophy home. That's right, I did. You know that? I did. And I took it home and I gave it to Sharif. Yeah. And I, and I realized now, I was like, I think I may have messed something up. Because a lot of times that our beef was going on, you know me, I'm the master marketer. Mm -hmm. About 60% of the time, I would just say it just to keep it going. But like when you did that, when you didn't have to do that, because you know, usually they take it and they mail it. But right. you're like Shaq, and you know, you, and you know Sharif loves you. Uh, so, you know, so he goes Sharif and he gave him a trophy. I, I, you know, I just said to myself, I was like, luckily I won three out of four <laughs> with this guy, but I was a <laughs> to this guy. So I, I owe you an apology. I'm going to give you an apology, but we ain't going to be doing all that crying. <laughs> and that was there. But thank you for that moment because uh, like Sharif loved that moment. That was the first time I was able you know, to give him something. He was there. I was going through a lot at that time. And, you know, he loved you for it. I love you for that moment. Yeah, so thank you for that moment. Thank you. Rule number seven, focus on one thing. Do you think one of the edge you had over everybody else was the biggest percentage of your focus was on one thing? Mm -hmm. Do you see it that way? Like that was my edge over everybody else? Uh, I do. Um, at the time, I didn't really understand that, right? So, you know, basketball for me was the most important thing. So everything I saw, whether it was TV shows, whether it was books I read, people I talked to, Everything was done to try to learn how to become a better basketball player. Everything. Everything. And so when you have that point of view, then literally the world becomes your library to help you to become better at your craft. Rule number eight, work the hardest. I read a story that you used to play uh, guys to 100. You'd, yeah. you'd, you'd be like, you have to stay in this gym and play me to 100. And 
Well, I mean, what was the biggest margin of victory you'd ever win at? Uh, well, I, I, in high school, I used to spy guys 99 to 100. <laughs> no kidding. Um, but, you know, listen, these practices, practices are meant to be competitive. They're meant to be competitive. If your practices are not more competitive than the games themselves, you're doing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. And most of these teams and coaches have gotten into a mindset of resting players. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a, too much. You know, we're not going to practice light day, light day, light day. Phil never gave us a light day. Mm -hmm. There's no days off. You show up and you work. Yeah. You practice. Yeah. And practices are going to be worse. They're yeah. going to be more physical. There's going to be more trash talking. And I'm going to let you know. Right? Yeah. If, you didn't, if you didn't show up today, I'm going to let you know. Yeah. And it's going to be embarrassing. And you're going to hate it. Um, but when game seven rolls around the NBA finals, you will be prepared. Rule number nine, be a problem solver. How do you see dance and other art forms and athletics in alignment with one another? Well, um, there, was a, there was a year we played um, Indiana Pacers in the finals. I rolled my ankle really bad. Mm -hmm. Jalen Rose stepped under me on purpose. Uh -huh. He admits it now, finally. And rolled uh -huh. my ankle really, really bad. I came back, finished the series, um, but I couldn't touch a basketball until mid-September, which was driving me crazy because I couldn't train. Mm -hmm. But I looked at, this was like the 10th time I rolled my ankle in one season. So I'm looking at that and I'm saying, okay, I got to address that. And so be, being that I couldn't get on the basketball court, um, what I did was I took tap dancing lessons. <laughs> okay. No kidding. I took tap. And tap was like the best training for me in the world because it strengthened my feet. It changed my rhythm and my approach to the game. I was able to change speeds when I came back the following season. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think dancers um, put way more strainer in their body than athletes do. And I think there's a lot that can be learned from that. My daughter took ballet for several years and I would sit there in the class, right? And I didn't know what I was getting into because I don't know anything about ballet, right? But I'm sitting there in the class and I'm watching her and I'm watching her get the first position, the second position, and I'm, start, I'm learning the structure and the rules that go along with that. Mm -hmm. And as athletes, there's a lot to be learned from that. Because if you simply go out there and perform and play, yeah, you'll be great every now and then. But if you play with structure, if you understand the rules that come along with that, the discipline that comes along with that, then you reach another level. But you guys have my respect. If other people that don't see that, they're idiots. That's on them. Thank you. <laughs> you got it. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip, is have fun. Three, two, one. You remember when your, your jersey retirement, and I'm walking out, and we were in a playoff race, and the hunt and was going south. I remember walking out and I gave you death, said, man, I love you. You know, congratulations, everything. And I was just, you know, um, happy for you, you know. But I couldn't help but say, you know, this night is made a lot sweeter because I know you have four and I have five. <laughs> <laughs> you I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> I told you I want to do this. Oh, yeah. This type of duo, I don't think you'll ever see again. Never, ever, ever, ever. <laughs> All right, we made yes, it. Yes, sir. No problem. <laughs> None of that. None of that. Hold on. We got to take a picture. <laughs> give him five and give me four. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Can you get them all in the picture? Yeah. <laughs> 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 now I have a special bonus clip from Kobe on how to have a kill list that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the three point landing question. Let's go from just watching a video to taking action. Here we go. Question number one, what's the one thing you need to focus on this week? Number two, who are three people whose success you will study today? And number three, what is your strong purpose? And if you like this video and you're gonna take action after watching it, give me a hashtag believe down in the comments as well. At 13 years old, I had a, um, <laughs> I had a kill list. And so, you know, they used to do these rankings. It was Street and Smith basketball rankings. And I was nowhere to be found because I was like 6'4", scrawny, like 160 pounds soaking wet. So I was like 57 on the list. And so I will look at 56, 55, all the way up to number one, who these players are, what club teams they played for. So when we go on an AAU travel circuit, 
I, I gotta hunt them down, right? And so that became my mission in high school, is to check off every other person, all those 56 other names, hunt them down and knock them down. That was it. Get a target on them right off the bat. That was it. Very simple. That's unbelievable. If you want another awesome video in our Black Excellence series, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there.